Good morning. Time for another Hey Techie video. Let's get into it. Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Hey Techie video. My name is Stephen and here on the channel we're interested with everything to do with the Apple smart home. That includes Apple's own smart home devices, as well as products that support Apple HomeKit and Siri shortcuts. It's the last one of those three that we're going to be focusing on today, in the first of a brand new series of walkthrough tutorials, talking about the best automations for your home. Having a smart home opens the door to an awful lot of opportunities. HomeKit is great for executing simple tasks, like turning on a series of lights on or off all at the same time. But what if we want to do something a little more complex? That's where Siri Shortcuts comes in. I've been saying it for a little while now, but in my opinion, Siri Shortcuts is one of the most underappreciated elements of the Apple Smart Home experience. And the reason for it is quite obvious. Siri Shortcuts requires some technical know-how to make it work, so it's a bit different from the rest of the experiences that you'll have had with Apple's software. However, in this series I'm going to approach some basic routines that you can do and build along with the video, and hopefully that will build up your confidence to go away and experiment with the Shortcuts app, and maybe even make some shortcuts yourselves. This video isn't intended for advanced shortcut users, and it may be a little bit basic for some of you watching, but you still might find something that you didn't know before anyway. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build your own good morning shortcut. First, we're going to set the entire routine to play through the HomePod Mini, and then it's going to read out a preset good morning message, as well as read the weather forecast and news headlines. The shortcut will then turn on the lights, and then conclude by turning on the radio. Now if that sounds like the kind of thing that you're interested in, make sure you stay tuned. And whilst you're there, make sure that you hit the subscribe button too so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So that's enough chat, without further ado, let's get into it. So, when you first open up the Shortcuts app, you'll be brought to this page here, which gives you all of your pre-existing shortcuts in a nutshell. Now, if you don't have any shortcuts here because this is your first time using it, I recommend that you check out the gallery which you can see on iPhone on the bottom right, and on iPad here you'll see is on the left, because there's a wide range of starter shortcuts made by Apple which will introduce you to how shortcuts work. They can be implemented really quickly, and a lot of them are very handy. For now though, we are interested in going to the Automations tab, which will allow you to set up a series of automations to let your smart home devices change or react under certain conditions. For example, I have a series of automations on my iPhone, which changes my phone screen background every day to keep the look particularly looking fresh and for others to change my Apple Watch face when I get to certain locations, like the airport or the gym. If you'd be interested in that kind of content as well, let me know in the comments down below, and I might make a video on how I've done that. So on the Automations tab then, if you click the plus in the top right hand corner if you're on iPhone, or top left if you're on iPad, you're going to be prompted with a new option to create a personal automation that works for you. You can also make home automations that it work for everybody in the smart home, but for specific shortcuts like this, it's better to go with a personal automation. It's going to give you a lot more control. This will bring up a range of different conditions that you can choose when something is triggered. So, for example, you can choose that at a certain time of day, something happens. Since this is a good morning routine, we want to choose alarm here because we're waking up in the morning. Once you've done that, you're going to be prompted with two options, to choose if the shortcut will be triggered when the alarm is snoozed or when it has stopped. Personally, I like snooze for this because it's the larger of the buttons on iPhone when you're waking up in the morning, and that means you're less likely to accidentally press stop rather than snooze. Under alarms, you should choose the wake up alarm if you use the sleep functionality in the clock app. 
This isn't essential and you can set this up to work with any alarm. But if you want to get the most out of your Apple products, including your Apple Watch, which can track your sleep, this is what I would recommend. Regular viewers of Hey Techie will know that I'm a huge fan of the Apple Watch and I think it is an underestimated element of the smart home experience. So if you're interested in finding out why I think that, check out this video here. Once you've done that though, you can go ahead and click next, which will bring you to the actions page, which is unsurprisingly where all the action happens. The first thing we're going to do in this routine is make sure that everything is rooted through our HomePod mini because the speakers are fantastic. By pressing the add action button, you'll be prompted with a series of different suggestions about what you want to add or to use. The first thing we're going to do here is type into the search bar AirPlay, and when you do so you can see that the set playback destination comes up. On Siri shortcuts, any changeable variable is highlighted in blue, so if we go ahead here and click on iPad, we'll then see that the Studio HomePod becomes an option that we can choose, and that means that everything that follows in this automation will be played through that speaker. Another great thing to have in the morning is a date and weather update. I live in Belfast, so the weather is extremely changeable and we do have to deal with a lot of rain, so it's always good to be prepared. Again, if we add the next action in the sequence and type in weather, we can see that the weather app appears, but below there is also a series of actions to take advantage of as well. In this instance though, we just want to choose the get weather at current location option. Once we have done that, we want Siri to be able to tell us the weather and not to have to look at our phone. To do so, add another action and this time type in text and a new action will appear on screen as a text box. In this box, we can set a greeting message for Siri to read every morning. So for example, in here, I'm gonna type in good morning, Stephen. And then crucially, you'll want to to start a new line, leaving a line of space above so the formatting looks like it does here. And that's really important when it comes to how Siri is going to read the text that you're inputting. So let's put today's date in first of all. Along the top of the keyboard, you'll see that there are a series of prompted variables that we can add in. So by tapping current date, we can add that. Once we've added it, it will then give us the option to have a medium or short form date. I recommend going for the short form because it sounds that bit more natural. There is also the option to have the time read out, but considering this is a wake up alarm, it probably means it's going to be set at the same time every day, so I've set this to none, but that's purely personal preference. Now that we've added the date, we can go back and add in the weather report. And this is why the step earlier was important. Again, like the date, we can type in what we want to Siri to say and then insert a variable. So as you can see here, I've typed in that the weather today is, and then I'm going to choose the weather conditions variable and insert that. After that though, I want to be able to give a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna follow that up with a new line of text saying with a high of, and then go back and press the weather conditions variable again. But this time I'm going to scroll down the series of options until I find high. You can then repeat the same steps again afterwards as I've done so here, but with low. Remember that you want to type everything in this text box like a script, because this is exactly what Siri is going to read for you. So far so good, but what else can we add? One of the great things with Siri shortcuts is that it is a perfect complement for functionality that already exists in Apple's HomeKit. If you already have a good morning routine for your HomeKit devices, you will be able to deploy that using a Siri shortcut as well. To add that in, you can press the add action button again and under apps, you will see the home app. By pressing onto that, you'll be presented with a range of options, which may include some of your pre-existing HomeKit scenes and routines. 
Now, I want to add my good morning routine from HomeKit because that controls my lights. So I could just press on the pre-selected option there, but if you don't have that or it doesn't appear for you, you can choose to control my home instead and then set the scene of your choice. If you don't have a scene set up, don't worry, you can also get it to work with any individual smart home device as well. So, in this case, when my good morning routine is run, my Philips Hue play bars and my Nanoleaf Essentials bulbs will turn on. We've not got round to reviewing the Philips Hue play bars just yet, but we do have a video on the Nanoleaf Essentials bulb, which I highly recommend. If you're interested in that, you can find a link to that video in the description below. I like to use both of these products because they support HomeKit adaptive lighting or circadian lighting, which means that the LEDs adjust the warmth of themselves to match the time of day, which is great for waking up in the morning too. Before we look at how to implement the next feature, we need to prompt Siri to read the text note. Again, by going back and pressing the plus, this time we want to choose documents and scroll down until you find the speak text option. Once you've inserted that, you'll see that a little thread then connects the last few actions all together so you know it's worked successfully. If you want to test that everything is working okay, you can always press the little play button in the bottom right hand corner at any time to test that your script is working. Okay, so next we want Siri to read us the headlines of major news stories in the morning. To make it sound a little more natural, we want to give Siri a verbal prompt about what will be said. So I'm going to include a little line leading up to Siri reading out the news headlines in the previous text box as well. Next though, we want to go back to the news headlines. Now unfortunately, there's no way to do this with certain apps, and unfortunately for me, the BBC does not support integration with Siri shortcuts. However, the information that I want aka the headlines, is readily available on the internet, and so we can access it that way. Before we go any further though, we'll want to get the web link to the content that we need. And in this case, we're going to need what's called an RSS feed. RSS is pretty old technology, it actually originates from the 1990s, and you might even recognise this little symbol from old web pages. But basically it is a web feed that allows computers to access text in computer readable form. Most news agencies will still have these, so a quick search on Google will allow you to find what you're looking for. On the BBC, for example, they have an entire page dedicated to these feeds, which makes it much easier for us. Once you've found the link that you want, copy and we'll paste it back in the Shortcuts app. Back in the Shortcuts app, press the plus button once again, and this time type web into the search bar. Scroll down until you see the get items from RSS feed option. It will then prompt you with a generic Apple link, but you can remove that and simply paste in the link for the newscaster that you wanted, so in our case here, the BBC. Initially, it will prompt you to read 10 items, but that might be too many for you, so I changed that down to 4 just so I get a general sense of the major news stories. Once your device has got the items from the RSS feed, it then needs to convert them into text. Again, going to the plus button, go to documents and then get text from input. Now automatically shortcuts will register that you want to get the text from the RSS feed and another little thread is connected between these two options. After that, we want Siri to read the text. So we'll need to search for documents and then scroll down until you find speak text again. So at this stage, we now have Siri set up to read the date, the weather, give us the morning headlines and turn on the lights. But what else do we want? I enjoy listening to the radio in the morning, and so this is something that I also want to add in. But I would like Siri to introduce what I am about to listen to as well, and maybe also provide me with a final word of wisdom before the day begins. So once again, I'm going to go to that plus button and go to the search bar and find text, and type in what I want Siri to say, just as we did before. 
afterwards, go to the plus button, documents, and then speak text again, and link those two together. We'll then type in exactly what we want Siri to introduce, aka the radio station. Once you've done that, let's integrate the radio station in, and this time we're going to do this using Apple Music. So pressing the plus button again, we can go to apps this time, and we can see that Apple Music is there. Now, if you don't want to listen to the radio, you can also listen to music, and you can set up a specific wake-up playlist if you would like to make one using the music app. This time though, we're going to go for the radio station, and once it's loaded in, you can listen to any radio station that is offered through Apple Music. If you're a subscriber to the premium service, you'll be able to listen to all of the Apple Music radio stations, or any of the available options you see here. I personally fancy a little bit more political discussion in the morning, so I'm going to choose LBC. And once you've done those steps, try hitting the play button to make sure that everything works okay. If you've followed all the steps so far, your automation should now be looking pretty good, but it might feel a little fast. In order to make the process feel a little less rushed, it's important to add pauses in during the script. By pressing the plus button and then going to add another action, go to scripting and scroll down until you see the option wait. This will allow you to insert pauses measured in seconds, and that will make it seem a little bit more natural when the routine is played. So in this project, I recommend going back and inserting a scripted pause after Siri has read the weather update. By inserting a one second break, it will make the process feel that bit more natural. Now since we haven't put them in during the process, we can now go back and add them. Once you've added the pause in, press and hold on the bubble in the script, and you'll be able to rearrange that the order is in, in which the actions are executed. This is really handy because it means if you make a mistake, you can simply swap the order in which things occur in the process. Okay then, so time for the moment of truth. Does it all work? If you've done everything right, it should sound something like this. Good morning, Stephen. Today's date is the 5th of June 2021. The weather today is 16 degrees Celsius and mostly cloudy with a high of 18 degrees Celsius and a low of 11 degrees Celsius. There is a 70% chance of rain today. Here are the top news headlines from the BBC this morning. G7 finance ministers have agreed to work together to create a level playing field on global taxation. Chris Hobson says vaccines seem to have broken the chain between infection and serious illness. Boys aged 14 and 16 are held on suspicion of the murder of D. John Reed. There are musical performances and cavalcades to celebrate the city's manufacturing heritage. And now here's the latest broadcast from LBC. Make sure you get up, you've got a PhD to write after all. It's not going to write itself. It's November. So there you have it folks, if you've been following along with me, congratulations, you have completed my Good Morning Siri Shortcuts tutorial. I hope that you've enjoyed the process and I hope that you'll be using it in future. There is an enormous range of things that you can do with Siri shortcuts, and indeed with your good morning routine. The possibilities are really endless, so why not go and have some fun with it? If you do, I'd love to know what you've added to this template. What smart devices have you included? Perhaps you'll control your coffee machine with your smart plugs. Or maybe you'd like to be woken up with your Apple TV, turning on your favourite show instead. I'm planning to do lots more of these walkthrough tutorials, which are designed to help everyone engage with Siri shortcuts. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, so that the YouTube algorithm knows that this is a great video that everyone should be watching. Finally, if you're new here and you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference and it really inspires me to continue producing new content. Amazingly, just after six months of starting up, Heiteki is already approaching the 1,000 subscriber milestone, and we'll be doing a giveaway to celebrate that. It'll only be open to my subscribers though, so make sure you can join our rapidly growing community by hitting subscribe. Until next time then, I've been Steven for Heiteki.